good evening, gentlemen. It's the Fat Man here. How are you guys doing? Hey, Great. hey, how you doing, buddy? What's up, buddy? I'm doing good. Uh, well, first, you, well, well, first, congratulations on the show. Uh, you Lord know, Jesus. you know, you know. Well, it's not success until you get a death threat. You know, so congratulations. <laughs> praise God. <laughs> praise God. Uh, uh, well, listen, I tried to call in last night with this, but you guys were really busy. Okay. Um, so it's going to kind of be off, off off topic a little bit, but. I was wondering if you guys could comment on the unforgivable sin in Islam, oh, what yeah. actually is forgivable, oh, and yeah. its implications. Uh, for instance, Muslims say that the sin is forgivable if you repent before death. Now, if that's the case, then the inverse would apply, I would think, meaning that all other sins can be forgiven in Islam if you don't, even if you don't repent of it. And I'll take my answer offline. Mm. Good. Good question. Thank you, sir. But also turn right. with the satanic verses, too. That's okay. Okay, let me just briefly comment on what our brother said. May the Lord Jesus bless you and pray for us. Uh, he's referring to Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4, verse 48, as well as chapter 4, verse 116. Uh, there it talks about that the one sin that Allah will not forgive is associating partners with Allah, known as shirk, associating partners with Allah. That is a sin that Allah will not forgive. He can choose to forgive any other sin apart from that. However, we read stories, for example, if you read the stories of the Quran concerning the Israelites, it says that when Allah brought them out out of the land of uh, Egypt, brought them into the wilderness, they knew that Allah was real, and they knew that Allah had come to deliver them. But when Moses went up on the mount, they fashioned a golden calf, they committed the unpardonable sin, and yet they were still forgiven. And you find that throughout the Quran. So if it's unforgivable, then why do we find examples where people commit the sin and are forgiven? With that said, the response given by Muslims typically means it's unforgivable if you don't repent before you die. Well, if you die committing any sin, you can't repent. Therefore, any sin is unforgivable yeah. if you define it that way. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying here? Yeah. I yeah. mean, if you're telling me it's only unforgivable if you don't repent of it uh, until you die, well, that's true of every sin. Mm -hmm. If I commit heinous crimes and sins and I don't repent of it, then it's unforgivable because I died in that state. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is a clear-cut contradiction that Muslims do not really have a way of harmonizing. Now, how does this affect the Prophet of Muhammad? And here I'd like my brother David to talk about the satanic verses. Muhammad, knowing Allah is one, uh, lapsed into idolatry, and yet still he wasn't condemned to hell, according to Islamic theology. Brother, maybe you want to say something about the satanic verses here. Yes, it, it's, it's important to keep in mind that Muslims often say that Muhammad was sinless, or at least free of major sin. This is a very common claim from Muslims, and yet... When we turn to your actual historical sources, we find that Muhammad committed the worst possible sin. Muhammad committed shirk, and not only did he commit the worst possible sin, he encouraged his yes. followers Precisely. to commit the worst possible sin. Right. He inserted the worst possible sin into the Quran, and even the pagans mm. bowed down in honor of this revelation. Of course, mm. I'm referring to the satanic verses, the, the basic story. According to your Muslim sources, according to many of your uh, first century Muslim scholars and historians whose traditions were passed on, uh, Muhammad was heartbroken over the persecution he was enduring at the hands of the pagans, and he was uh, upset that they weren't receiving Islam, and he began longing for a revelation from Allah that would allow the pagans to come to Islam. And of course, one day, uh, Muhammad got the revelation he was looking for. Uh, it came as part of Surah 53, and as mm -hmm. Muhammad was uh, delivering Surah 53, we get to the part where it says, Have you not heard of Allah uh, and Alusa and Manat, the third, the other? And that's when Satan inserted certain words onto Muhammad's mouth. These are the exalted cranes whose intercession is to be hoped for. So, my Muslim friends, when you read this Surah, Keep in mind that it originally promoted polytheism, and also keep in mind that your prophet, the greatest prophet in history, committed shirk, the unforgivable sin, and that he couldn't tell the difference between a revelation from God and a revelation from Satan. How anyone can believe in this man uh, is beyond me. Brother David, uh, that, that's completely consistent with the way he initially received the revelations. Uh, it's well attested to, is it not, in the hadith, that Muhammad thought that it was some sort of evil spirit yes, that was speaking know. to him yes. in, in the beginning. Uh, there was a strangulation process, supposedly, yes. uh, by this angel Gabriel, which he, he was so afraid, he ran back to his wife Khadija, cover me, cover me, Khadija. And, uh, you know, also, re remember uh, the early life of, of Muhammad, the early prophethood career, if you will,
Uh, remember, he was suicidal mm -hmm. on many occasions. And, and th he actually, he, he was suicidal when he began receiving this revelation yeah. because he believed that he was possessed by a demon and he didn't want his enemies to be able to say of him, yeah. look at this man, he's insane, he's, he's possessed. And so imagine this, uh, 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 women out there, imagine if your, hu if your husband, whom you love dearly, comes home to you and he wants to hurl himself off a cliff because he is convinced that he heard a voice of a demon and he is convinced that if he is possessed he is going to hurl himself off a cliff mm -hmm. uh, you of course want your husband to survive and it's important it's important to note that Muhammad's belief that no this is actually uh, Allah speaking to me this didn't come from Muhammad Muhammad believed that he was demon possessed exactly. this That's came demon. from Khadija yeah. and Wadaka so it, it's interesting they weren't there Muhammad's first impression of this was that it was evil and demonic in origin. Yes. He ran out of the cave screaming and in terror and suicidal and depressed. And other people who had no clue what he saw, mm. they had to convince him in his suicidal state, no, 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 you, you're a good person. Allah would never allow this to happen to you. You must be a prophet of God. Yeah. Well, I'll just say, sometimes your first impression is yes. the correct one. Yes, absolutely.